Your forecast first. Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect right now for about half of our counties here, especially closer to I-55. That's until 11 p.m. But let's show you what the radar looks like right now. And it is quite colorful, as you can see. Several severe thunderstorm warnings to our west here. And we're starting to see them start to get into our area, including McLean County, a warning until 6.30 p.m. Parts of Logan and Mason County until 6.15. And then the newest one just issued for those of you in the Jacksonville area, Cass, Morgan, and Scott County. Counties, and you can see that purple color indicating maybe a little bit of hail with that system as it moves to the east. This entire line pushing off to the east. There's Decatur, Springfield. Over the next hour, you'll be impacted by this and everyone down the line as storms push in. Let's take a live look in Jacksonville. Some of our cameras there. You can see the dark skies moving in as they're under a severe thunderstorm warning. And then a live look in Springfield. You can also start to see those storm clouds developing. The latest on the severe threat coming up. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. It's the first confirmed case of COVID-19 here at Clark Lindsay Village. Why health officials say not much needs to change. It's not something that we want to do. Nursing home workers say there is not enough PPE to keep everyone safe. What's being planned if things don't change and quickly? There's a shortage of masks for people on the front lines. How you could help change that. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. People need these, and I can make them, so that's my way of helping. She's helping essential workers in central Illinois protect themselves and the people around them, and you can help too. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Public places will look a little bit different starting Friday because everyone will be required to wear a mask, but there's not enough for essential workers, and that's why we are having a drive-in in our back parking lot tonight. WCI 3's Jessica Coons is out there right now, so we have been collecting these face coverings all day, and we are really raking them in. Yeah, we are, Jennifer. You know, you mentioned at 5 o'clock we weren't sure the response we were going to get, and it's been incredible. We just had another car behind me at the beginning of the 6 o'clock newscast throwing some masks in. I want to show you at the top of the 5 o'clock newscast, this was filled. Now it's not. So that's great. We filled our fifth bin, but that means we've got two pretty empty bins here that we need filled, and we're going to be out here until 7 o'clock. These masks are going to essential workers in Champaign County, people who are interacting with the public every day, people who work at grocery stores who work at gas stations, people who work at local nonprofits, including food banks. These masks are going to be washed and sanitized and then given to them. And as you mentioned, Jennifer, starting Friday, masks will be required for everyone in Illinois if you can't maintain six feet of so social distance. So this is really going to help those essential workers. We're going to send it back to you. All right. Thank you so much. We have breaking news tonight. A substitute teacher in Urbana has been arrested for sexual abuse. 36 year old Clarence Walker is accused of inappropriate contact with several 10 year old students at Leal School. Police say he placed his hand underneath the student's clothing, rubbed backs and shoulders and gave unwanted hugs. Urbana police say they found out about the accusations last October. DCFS was notified and he did not return to school. If you have any information, you're asked to call Urbana police. Champaign County has its first COVID-19 case tied to a senior living facility. It's at Clark Lindsay Village in Urbana, and it's the news the staff hoped would never come, but also what they had been bracing for since before the stay-at-home order first went into effect. WCI3's Emily Braun is live in Urbana now, and Emily, so how is the staff there feeling hearing this news? Jennifer, the communications director told me it's discouraging that even with every precaution they could think of in place, they still couldn't avoid a case. And now it's just really upsetting for them because they consider these residents to be like their family. The resident who tested positive lived in the Meadowbrook Health Center. They are now in the hospital and it's not known when they'll be able to return to the village. Since the middle of March, Clark Lindsay Village has restricted visitors except for health care workers and cautioned their residents against leaving the property. They've also been screening employees every time they come to work and taking residents temperatures when their food is delivered. And they've had a plan in place if they were to ever get a case. And that's why they say if it had to happen here, at least they're equipped to handle it.
We are very, very fortunate that um, Clark Lindsay is in Champaign County because Champaign County has the resources that a lot of communities that are in different cities throughout the United States, they don't have. So we are very fortunate that we're gonna be able to get all of our, our residents in Meadowbrook Health Center tested. In spite of all this, of course, they understand how upsetting this is to families and other residents. So they are addressing those concerns and assuring people they're doing everything possible to stop the spread and keep others safe. The Champaign-Urbana Public Health District has already been out here and evaluated the procedures they have in place. And based off of that, they didn't recommend any further changes to procedures already in place. Live in Urbana, Emily Braun, WCIE3, your local news leader. Emily, thank you so much. We have an update now. The number of COVID-related cases continues to grow at a Sangamon County nursing home. There are 40 new cases today, 20 residents and 20 staffers. There's been a total of 81 cases. Five people have died. This is new for you at six. Nursing home workers all over the state say they are in desperate need of PPE. And they say as cases continue to go up, they're concerned about the lives of the residents they work for as well as their own. WCI3's Gabrielle Franklin takes a look at how this may have them walking off the job. Working conditions of nursing home workers have had a severe impact on residents. Nursing home employees say they are fed up with not having enough equipment to keep themselves and the residents they help safe. The money that we got from Springfield that the owners got were supposed to be for PPE. We have to wear one gown per patient, per patient. We have to go in that room. We have to take off the gown and leave that gown in the room. So the next time we have to go into that room, we have to expose ourselves just to get that gown that we left in there because they say that there's not enough PPE. Employees at more than 40 facilities in Illinois say they plan to strike on May 8th if managers do not agree to improve working conditions in their new contract, including better PPE and higher hazard pay during the pandemic. While most of the nursing homes that were sent notices are in the Chicago area, some, like this home here in central Illinois, could see strikes as well. Oh, it's not something that we wanna do. Um, you know, we've offered up this contract for a while now, and it's just, it's gotten to the end of it. And, you know, by no means would we abandon our patients whatsoever. You know, they don't have a family to speak for them right now. We are the people, we are their voice. You know, if we don't stand up for them, then who is going to? In Springfield, Gabrielle Franklin, WCA 3, your local news leader. We reached out to the owners of the nursing home that received a notice in Springfield. We have not heard back. Vermilion County has suffered its first COVID-related death. A man in his 70s who tested positive more than two weeks ago has died. The county also has its 18th positive case. It's a teenager. Shelby County has its first death. A 73-year-old man from Shelbyville died this morning. He did not have any other health problems. Now, those numbers added to the state's deadliest 24 hours. 144 people lost their lives. 6% of those deaths are from central Illinois. That brings the total to 2,125 deaths. There are more than 2,200 new cases, bringing us to around 48,000 in 96 counties. To keep up to date with the latest on COVID-19, download the WCIA3 News app. Now, the U of I is making plans to reopen in the fall. President Tim Colleen sent out the message today. He says he has created a committee to help the system plan for in-person instruction come August. He also stated there will be issues because of the pandemic. Those will affect things like class size, dorm occupancy, and large sporting events. Classes right now and in the summer are online. Now, Parkland College and Champaign move classes online as well, but an outage to their e-learning system means students and teachers can't access some of their coursework right now. The college announced the problem yesterday. It says it's a disruption to several campus services and applications, including websites and the e-learning platform. Parkland said in a statement in part, quote, we're focused on restoring operations as quickly and as safely as possible. As it has the coronavirus caused a meat shortage, what meat producers here in Illinois have to say, and also tonight. My wife has made 100 masks so far. We thank her and all of you. So many have gone above and beyond how our drive is going as we try and help essential workers.
And we are tracking the latest with severe weather. That is a live look at the SK Storm Tracker right now on I-72. Meteorologist Jack Gerfin out on the roads. As you can see, look at those skies uh, threatening there off to our west. And you can see that on the Storm Tracker Doppler as well. As storms push into central Illinois, we've got you covered with the latest on the severe weather threat coming up after the break.